hello, hello, hello. It's about five o'clock, April 1st. It feels in many respects like the first true day of spring. Although I've been saying that every day for the past week. But this is really unbeatable. Early evening in Budapest beneath the castle walls. It's like a dream, to tell you the truth. We have the Sikla Korhas, the hospital in the rock. Believe it or not, during World War II, the caverns beneath the castle hill were used as a hospital and bunker system. Oh, the bellows of the earth. Zarva, it's closed, it's coronavirus, you know how it is. But a tremendous little museum, if you ever get the chance to visit. We're on the Lobashut, which is my street, my neck of the woods. Basically translates to the horsey streets. My favorite part about living on the Lobashut is this fellow right here. Pisat Mari Karoy. Still don't really know who he is, but he's got one heck of a bios. Bios, it means mustache. Love old Pisat Mari Karoy. And now let's head up the stairs. Oh, ho, ho. here we go. Could not have asked for better weather. This is Goldilocks weather. Not too hot, not too cold, just right. Egan. Tot Arpad Shaitani. The walkway of dreams. In a few weeks, actually in about one week, these buds will blossom into magnificent, magnificent cherry petals. Pink, Japanese, and spectacular. But for now, you'll just have to leave that to the imagination. This really sums up the Buddha side of the city. I mean, we have the castle hill right here and a few little pockets down, different bits, different bobs. But this here is really Buddha. The hills, the sprawling hills as far as the eye can see. The Hegyek in Hungarian. A truly topsy-turvy town. Wow, look at that. Fehermachka. Nice. Now don't say Fehermachka. Fehermachka, white cat. And here is an air day hussar. Oh, oh, look at him go. That statue was actually sculpted by a member of the Pick family. Pick salami, Taili salami, winter salami, regionally protected, produced down in the Pick factory in Seged. Anyway, the guy who sculpted that, he said, uh-uh, I've had enough with the meat. I'm gonna make beautiful statues. Bada boom, bada bing. I think he did pretty well for himself. That yellow one down there, that's my house. Lovashut Tizenyots, Lovashut 18. Probably my favorite place I've ever lived. Just behind the castle wall. Great for protection during an international crisis. Always want to live behind a fortification of some sort. Check it out. What do the kids say these days? Look at the drip. Drippity, drippity, drip. Whew. There we have the Buddha Tower. Actually, they say the oldest in the entire city in terms of still erect structures. 13th century. The proud Hungarian colors billowing in the wind atop this barbershop striped pole. Pest is vast as well, but on a much lower, flatter plane. It doesn't have quite the geographic diversity that we're blessed with here in Buddha. They actually used to be two separate cities. Three, if you count Old Buddha, Old Buddha, smashed together in 1873 to become what we know and love today as Budapest. You're walking amidst romantic medievalism and all of a sudden, World War II. The eras of history are everywhere in Budapest. Yes, they are. And speaking of different eras of history, here we have a memorial to a Turkish Pasha, one of the only existent memorials that commemorates the Ottoman era of the city. A heinous era for Hungarians. Domination, subjugation by the Ottomans. And here we see it. Vezir Abdurrahman Abdi Anaut Pasha. Greens and reds and yellows, my oh my. A more colorful street I perhaps have not known. Uh-oh. Here comes the Scooter Gang. One of the most notorious gangs in the entire city. Be on the lookout. All right, clear the way, clear the way. In the castle district, every door 
tells its own story. And every story needs a door to let you in. Oh, brave, brave, brave Koshuth Lyosh. Koshuth Lyosh. The firebrand of the revolution in 1848. Ebenaz Epulet Ben. He may have actually lived in this house. I think he must have. Oh, yes. Terrific. Machyash Kirai. King Machyash. One of Hungary's most beloved kings. He reigned during a relative glory age. Tail end of the 15th century. After his death, it all went down the chute and the Ottomans came in. Not 30 years later. 1526, Battle of Mohach. Tragikush. And here we have the church which bears King Machyash's name. There you can see some of that signature jaune tiling, the porcelain from Pech on the top of the roofs. Zarva? Uh. Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings. The white city of Gondor come to life. And here we have Istvan Kirai, the first Christian leader of Hungary. Inaugurated as king, coronated on the year 1000 on the nose. Istvan Kirai. King Stephen. Saint Stephen as he's known today. Simply does not get much better than this, does it now? It simply does not get much better than this. Budapest. Oh. We'll go up top now for some better views before heading onwards into the city. Oh, a nice music. A nice music. I'm starting to speak like a Hungarian more and more by the day. <laughs> Normally this entire passageway is choked, suffocated, filled to the brim, chock full of tourists. Nowadays, they are more of the domestic sort. <sighs> oh, quite romantic. Look at these views. The Parliament building. We'll get a closer look at her later on. And onwards, we shall walk. Go! Go! This bike has been here for as long as I've lived in Budapest. And perhaps it always shall be. And now let's empty down towards the riverside, towards the Duna, the Danube, and see what she is hiding today. Oh, tucked into the corner, little fisher boy. We had some of the main sights and sounds up by the castle, but things like that, that little fisher boy, are what I truly love about Budapest. The undiscovered secrets that pop up around every corner and every street. And then, oh, we have the chain bridge, the Say Cheney chain bridge. Actually, you can't walk across it anymore because they're doing construction, a two year renovation project sorely needed. It was the Say Cheney bridge that finally linked Buda and Pesh together. Built by who they called the greatest Hungarian, Say Cheney Istvan, Stephen Say Cheney. And he was the one who dreamt of connecting the two cities. Most importantly, because he could not attend his own father's funeral. The Danube used to freeze before we had drastic climate change, melting everything. And his father died during the winter time and he couldn't get across. So he said, hey, we're gonna build a bridge. And that they did. I've never really understood what this was, but it is fantastic. The trams in Budapest are yellow. This is one of the more modern iterations, the number 19 tram. And as we round the Bem Rock parts, we can see the Seicheni chain bridge, and there is glorious Buda Castle. Not necessarily the prettiest pearl from up close, but from a distance, a finer silhouette I have not known. A crescendo on our city. A capstone. I call this chiclet land. Chiclets everywhere. Oh, there we go. Dodge to the side. This is a Miss KK sticker. She makes provocative multimedia fashion critiques. Satire on our current society. Our current world of, well, narcissistic indulgence. <laughs> so Hungarian. Look at this. How Hungarian can you get? Buda Castle. Here we have it. 2023 Us, that means fall. 
if this bridge renovation project is completed before the spring of 2025, I'll buy you a Christmas dinner. Old school tram, 41. And here we have the Erzsébetides, named for Empress Sisi. The monarch of Hungary, the queen, the wife, the Franz Josef. Franz Josef, not really liked by the Hungarians. Sisi, beloved. That's why she has a bridge and he no longer does. Here we have the Rudash George Ferdu. George Ferdu, the Hungarian word for bathhouse. You can just about make out the Turkish cupola dome popping its head up there, juxtaposed against the rock wall of Gellert Hill. The Turks, they built this bathhouse originally, believe it or not, 16th century. And here it stands still to this day. One of the most well-rounded baths in the city, also one of the most expensive. Up there you have the Cittadella, Statue of Liberty, Sabacak Sobor. One of the only remaining and best remaining examples of Soviet statuary in Budapest. A lot of the Soviet statues were torn down. Not old Lady Liberty up there. She used to stand for repression, and now she stands for, well, something else. Some of the Budapesti drinking, socializing along the Danube, socially distant at this grievous time of coronavirus, but a favorite activity in any season. Maybe not winter. Oh yes. The beautiful Liberty Bridge. Favorite bridge in all of Budapest, it has to be said. And there's the Gelet Hotel. And there's me. What am I doing there? Why do I have an eye patch? People love to come onto the Sabacak Heed and drink, enjoy, take selfies, all sorts of activities. Uh, maybe we'll head back this way. Stay on the Buddha side today. Save Pesht for the weekend. Gelet Yojfridu. Also a very famous bathhouse. Also overpriced. Also fantastic. There are a few things in life more magnificent than this. A little off the beaten path Hungarian picnic. We got Aran Yasok, one of the cheapest, most affordable loggers around. Not gonna lie and say it's the tastiest, but it gets the job done. We've got some Kaisi Baratsk, apricots, palinka, Hungary's national drink. Not necessarily the apricot flavor, but the palinka itself. And oh, let's tuck into this here because I'm absolutely famished. A little rantok shertish fried pork sandwich from the corner shop down the street. Love the way it just spills out over the bun like this. Oh yeah, that's the good stuff. That's the good stuff. And this is the uh, coup d'etat, or the coup de grace, as they would say, the palinka. It's always better to get it in a village somewhere distilled in a grandmother's back kitchen. The glassy Danube below. Beautiful light pink hue to the sky. A few bugs flying around. Can't let that bother you. Tom Bean got me this blanket. And tomorrow, I will show you all Pesht the other side of the city.